Okay. <laughs> this is the series where I take your suggestions and turn them into S CSS. It basically allows you to take a plain HTML element, like this button, and turn it from this into this. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of You Suggested I Coded. I've released my first episode just over a week ago and we got over 3000 views, uh, tons of comments. So a ton of you guys left a suggestion under my video telling me what kind of SCSS you know, component I should make, uh, something that might be relevant to your guys' website or whatever it might be. And I got loads of suggestions uh, and I have a huge backlog of things that I'm going to do. But one that kind of stood out to me and uh, I thought it was pretty simple and kind of useful on most websites, it's a loader. Whenever you're loading some content and you need to inform the user of waiting a little bit, you know, you have that little spinny, spinny loader that's going on and on and sometimes makes you wait way too long uh, for whatever you need to do. So actually today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of those and see how it comes out. Now, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit the thumbs up button below. Uh, it really helps us as YouTubers to kind of get our content out there. And you know, I'm kind of trying to share my knowledge here. So I'd love, you know, to be exposed to more people uh, which might actually benefit from my content in some way. Now, I don't know if you might be aware, but one of the things combined with this series is all the code I write, uh, every component that you guys suggest that I attempt and try and make, I will host on a public repository on GitHub which will be available for you guys to use. Uh, and I'm also working on a website, a demo website, where I will be hosting all of those demos of all the things that I have made. So you can look, you can find what you maybe like. So if you're interested in seeing it, make sure you stay notified with my content. Uh, I will be publishing a link to it very soon, and I'm very excited to release that. Now, my approach to this loader is... Um, no, actually, I, I, I don't have an approach, and I don't have an approach to any of my content. I'm just going to dive straight into it, and uh, see what we can come up with, right? Uh, I, uh, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> okay, so in that case, I don't want to keep you guys waiting. Let's just jump in and see what we can have. What I did beforehand is I set up a very pure, uh, obviously, TypeScript component. You can make it in React, TypeScript, a plain JavaScript. You can just copy the SCSS. I imagine this as having a div, just one div, and everything inside it. So what I want to do is make a spinny loader. So let's say that I have a wrapper and then inside of the wrapper, I'm going to have my spinny ball. So let's just create another div called class name and I'm going to call it classes dot uh, the outer region. And then let's say I want the outer region to spin, but I want the inner to stay constant. So we're gonna have another div called classes dot inner. I think that kind of makes sense, uh, I think. So then inside the Inner div, we probably want to have some kind of logo uh, representing our name, our personal portfolio. So we're going to need probably another div and let's just call it logo. Um, inside that, we're probably going to have an image tag, but let's just leave that blank for now and not worry about it. Let's go into our SCSS class and start building it. Now, we know that we declared the first thing as wrapper, where our loader will kind of sit. Let's just suppose that the wrapper I want a width of 200 pixels and a height of 200 pixels and let's just give it a background color so we can uh, so we can see it for now and just make it like red very simple very easy very fast uh, and okay so we have a red circle perfect uh, I pff. red circle god damn I need to learn my shapes red square <laughs> okay back to the code um, now our archer class bro can you speak Archer class uh, should position things inside it in the center. So I already know that I want display flex. Uh, I already know that I want to align my items in the center and my justify content in the center. Classic flex positioning. Everyone knows it. Everyone's going to use it. Now I think we're going to use this more than once. So actually, a little neat trick is because we're using SCSS, we can actually create something called a mixin, which is a block of code that we can constantly reuse and include with the other classes that we call. So our mixin will just be basically this. So I reckon we're going to be reusing this many times. I always do whenever I write code. Uh, now we also need to name the mixin and we call it flex. And then all we have to do is just say that we need to include flex and all of those properties are already included in our outer class which is really nice and a really neat trick when you're doing SCSS. Now we want our outer to be of width 
whoops, and we want it to be of height, oh I can't write today, height 100%. And then we're going to give it a border radius. The easiest way to make a circle is just give it a border radius of 50%. Now let's also give it a background uh, color. And then if we have a look at what we have, there we go. So this is our circle that we're going to be working with. The next thing we want to do is work on the inner class. So we refer back to the inner class and we can also say everything inside it is positioned center. So we can just include our mixin, which is flex. Super nice, super neat, super easy, straightforward. Always love mixins. We'll always use them. Another thing we want to say is we want a width of like, I don't know, like 99%, height of 99%. I can't type for shit today. Okay, and let's say that we want the background color of a gray. So we can actually distinguish it and see what is going on. Okay, and this is our a background. Now, how do we do this so it actually works very well? Um, mm, um, um, okay, <laughs> uh, I need to focus. I, I need to focus. I'm getting very out of focus. So what do we want to do to make this component look good and how do we want to do it? Okay, so there is this one thing I saw one time and basically what they did is um, they kind of had a circle but they squashed it. And because they squashed the circle, when they made the circle move, it actually gave the illusion that there is like a thing getting thicker and thinner as it goes around. A squished circle? Okay, well, let's, let's just jump into it and see what we can come up with. Okay, I have an idea. So let's get of this background gray property and let's just create a background. Now we can create a radial gradient. What we can do is actually we can create a radial gradient for the first half of the circle and then we can create a radial gradient for the bottom half of the circle. And the bottom half of the circle, we're going to give it like a hardness of 100%, which means it's basically going to be a semicircle, but the top we're going to give it a hardness less than 100%, I don't know what amount yet. And basically we're just going to make it a little bit shorter so the radial gradient doesn't go all the way to the top. So it kind of cuts it a bit shorter and therefore we'll end up, I think, with a squashed circle. Uh, so I'm just going to try that and this is going to be a full-on experiment. I actually don't know, um, I don't know if this is going to work, but pff, let's try it. And we want to be white with 99% and we want it to be transparent. Yeah, let's have a look at what happens when we do that. Uh, so... Oh dear, that is not what we want. Um, <clears throat> oh, we need to do a background of no repeat. We want one from the top and one from the bottom. Okay, that doesn't change anything. Another thing we might want is... <laughs> We need to specify the background size. Background size will be 100% and then 50%. So now... Okay! <laughs> that worked! Um, wow, I didn't expect it to. So we want another radial gradient. Uh, let's just indent it a little bit. 100%, so this one is going to be at the top. Also 99%, trans, trans, transparent. And then we're going to have this one at bottom and also no repeat. Let's have a look. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Perfect, 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 perfect. So let's remove this red background. I really don't like it. We just want it to spin around. So we can create a keyframe or keyframes in this case. And we're going to call it rotation. And then within this rotation, we're going to do a from attribute and it's going to be a transform, uh, rotate from zero degrees to 360 degrees. Now, when we specify the keyframes, we also need to specify the animation. So this animation will be specified on our outer circle. Uh, yeah, okay, animation. And it's going to be rotation rotation for about one second 
uh, we're going to have it at linear speed and infinite because we don't want it to ever end. And let's have a look. <laughs> this is good. This is good. This is a very cool illusion. So it's actually loading and it's spinning. Um, one thing I might want to do is as it's spinning, the rest of the circle is lighter. Now it's all the same color, but we kind of want this color gradient. We can change this background. So I want to keep this color, so I'm going to copy it. We want a linear gradient and we want it to be at 180 degrees, which is like straight up. Oh, I know why it doesn't like it is because we can't have the color here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And then we want another color. So let's do like 230 and give that 50%. <sighs> Let's have a look at that. Yes, yes, this is exactly what we want. So now it actually seems like it's loading around. Last thing to actually do at this point is to just to add the logo. And let's go back to our TypeScript and here we can insert an image, SRC, whatever the name is, give it an old, and call it a logo and just close it. I already have like a logo for myself. I'm going to call it logo from um, let's go out, let's go out, assets slash images slash Philip logo dot png. And I'm going to pass this logo into here, logo, and then inside our inner, because that's where our logo sits, we're going to specify logo, include flex, in, in, k, lud, flex, because we want everything sitting right bang on in the center. And then let's say we want it to have a width of like, I don't know, like 90% height of 90% because we wanted to fill out most of that inner space. Well, actually, that should be fine. Um, oh, two things. First of all, <laughs> we want to make our image smaller. Uh, so let's just set it to the width of the parent and that should fix one of the issues. Okay, cool. And now what we need to do is because it's spinning with the loader, we need to give this logo an animation, uh, which will be basically rotation again. Uh, also one second, it has to be the same speed, also linear, also infinite, but in reverse. Ah, oh, CSS is so neat, it allows you to do these cool fancy tricks just like that. And now, and now we're hey. Calling your phone, why you not hitting me back? Please just pick up, don't wanna go tip for tap. Okay guys, well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something new. Please make sure to drop other suggestions down in the comments below. Uh, I do read every comment and I do reply to everything and I want to see what kind of things you can come up with for me to make. Uh, thank you very much if you are one of my subscribers and thank you for sticking around. But for now, I will see you in my next episode. Bye. What are you still doing here? I mean, if you stuck around for so long, you might as well just watch my two other videos. And if not, just subscribe and I'll see you there.